Good morning everyone. Uh, today is Friday. It's Friday the 23rd of June. Um, I'm still in London. I just thought I'd do a Porsche video today because I haven't done one. Let's fix up the face tracking. There we go. Um, I thought I'd do a Porsche video and because it's coming up to six months of ownership but more importantly I know before I left Sydney the 911 had 2,000 kilometers. So this video is my first Porsche, my first 2,000 kilometers. If you want to see the uh, when I bought the Porsche, it's just here in this link here. So I guess this video is just to help other people who are going through the same process as me that I went through, I think August, in August last year when I posted the first video, but I've been thinking about a Porsche for many, many years. Uh, my friend has a 911 GT3. Um, he's had three Porsche or Porsche since I've, well, I always loved them. I wanted to buy one in 2004. I wanted to buy a 1980s or 1989 Porsche 911 Carrera. I never did. I should have because the value now is is gone up dramatically. Anyway, so the main consideration, I mean, obviously when you're thinking about buying a Porsche, is the first thing is the purchase price. Now with my car, the purchase price, um, I set myself a budget. Uh, that budget, because I was buying the car in Australia, only gave me, you know, a few options to what I could purchase. I could purchase probably a very high kilometer 2005 Carrera S, if you could find one. Um, or I could buy a low kilometer base Carrera. Um, in the end, I found a low kilometer base Carrera at a dealer, um, which was in immaculate condition. It had 40,000 kilometers. I'm not sure how many miles that is. Uh, 25,000 miles, something like that. Um, and I purchased it. It was silver, which was the color I wanted. It didn't have the factory wheels on it. It had Techart 20 inch wheels on it, which other people, you probably see in my video here about that. Um, I'm still considering changing them. Um, I'm going to make another video about that in the next couple of days um, About where I'm at with the wheels um, But yeah, so the purchase price it's the purchase price for me was Based on the fact that I wanted to make sure I had money left over to add a few accessories um, like the Fister exhaust um, and a few things like that. So the purchase price is a personal thing. Um, my car in Australia for a base Carrera was, uh, it was under 90,000 Australian dollars, which are probably a lot of you in America or UK are probably going, what, you paid that much for a base 911? That is the price. Uh, probably the, the standard sort of price is somewhere around 80, 85. Um, I paid in the mid 80s. Uh, my car had reasonably good history. Um, it was a two-owner car. I mean, there's little things here and there which weren't exactly right, but I wasn't that fussed. I mean, it was um, it was obviously very well looked after. You could see the interior is immaculate. Um, so, it, 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 you know, once I had the PPI done, it was it was a pretty easy decision. Another consideration when you're buying a 911 is the um, insurance cost. Now, the insurance cost on the insurance cost on my car is. I don't pay it yearly, I pay it monthly. Uh, it's just how I like paying insurance, so I pay it monthly. The insurance cost on the 911 um, insured for the value that I purchased it at, with all the options, uh, was about $50 Australian more per month than my 2004 Audi A4 S-Line that I had. The Audi A4 was only insured for $12,000. So, the difference in the insurance cost, I think, is pretty good. I went through Porsche Insurance Australia. Um, because I don't drive the car much, uh, drive the car much, it's on the, I think it's two to three times a week or something like that, two to three times a week or something to be driven three times a week, which for me is, is okay at the moment. If I spend more time in Australia, then I would actually change it to two more days. Um, but that brought the price down a bit. I have full no claim bonus, so, um, yeah, so the insurance cost was really reasonable for a car like that, for a sports car, it was, it was, uh, it's not expensive. If you're buying a new, if you're buying a used Porsche 911, get a PPI. Uh, a Porsche pre-purchase inspection is worthwhile, even if the car is not in the city you live in, even if it's interstate, or, you know, 
miles away or kilometers away, you should get a PPI. There's lots of places that do it. I had my PPI done by Autohouse Hamilton here in Sydney. Luckily enough, the dealer that I bought the car from, Scuderia Graziani in Ulmalu here in Sydney, allowed me to take the car for the day for as long as I needed it for. I took it over to Autohouse Hamilton, which is on Northern Sydney here, and they did a full PPI on it, which took about three to four hours. The cost in Australia for the PPI was about, <clears throat> was 450, and then you get a reasonable report about what you need to fix and what you may not need to fix. Um, my car had a service at Porsche, uh, Porsche Center Sydney uh, in the late in late January. I bought it early February, so it already had a minor service done. So certain things were pinpointed in that. They're just minor things which Auto House fixed, and the cost wasn't that much. It needed a major service. That was probably the biggest thing, um, and it had uh, it had a small coolant leak, but it was just a cheap the cheap seal underneath which they fixed straight away. But yeah, PPI, invaluable. If you're buying a Porsche 911, get a PPI. It's important. Okay, so the wheels and tires. Um, my car came with the 20 inch Techart rims. Um, the tires on the back are 305. The tires on the front are 240, I think. 235, 240. The rears are 305, 25. Um, the tires are big. Uh, the tires, I've done a quick search because I'm thinking about changing my wheels over. The tires are not so easy to come by for the for the rim that I have on my car. Um, I may Michelin Australia doesn't even have them listed that size. Uh, Michelin UK does. Michelin US does. Um, I'm looking at either if I replace the tires on these wheels, I would be looking at um, Pilot Super Sports. I think um, I know everyone gets PS2s. I don't think PS2s are available in this size. I haven't seen them. If they are, let me know in the comments below. Um, but um, I'll put the wheel size in my description, but um, the tires are a bit hard to come by. I think I priced them and I've only found them from a reseller in Sydney, I think a parallel importer, and the four tires on 20 inch with Mitchell and Pilot Super Sports are 2700 Australian dollars, which is not fitted, so that's quite expensive. The other thing to note about my tires, and I noticed this in the PPI and it's something I probably should be more conscious of, is the tire the age of the tire. My tires are actually stamped 2005. So as you know, tires last six to 10 years max. And I mean, 10 years you should change them. So my car's now 11 years old. The tires really need to be changed, which is why I'm really thinking about either changing my wheels or just getting new tires uh, when I get back to Sydney in a couple of weeks. The interior of the car, a few things you should note if you're looking for a 911, especially a 2005 997 to 2007. 2005 to 2007, there was a problem with the air conditioning controls. The um, little flipper switches uh, deteriorate, the rubber that was on them, if uh, you have grease on your fingers or oil, which a lot of you probably already know, it will just wear off the finish. Uh, my car, when I went for a test drive in it, was the first thing I noticed. It looked really, really ugly. It had been someone had put texture and put texture to color it in the previous owner, which looked terrible. Um, I looked at a few I mean, I searched the forums, there was obviously places that could replace the buttons. They didn't look that good to me. Um, in the end, I bought a new unit from Suncoast, um, had it delivered to Auto House, and they fitted it for me. Um, the price from Suncoast was about 50%, 40% less than the price Porsche, uh, Porsche Australia wanted to charge me for the air conditioning unit. It was still expensive. It was, it was I think, 700, 700 odd US, but still a lot cheaper than buying it from Porsche Australia. And now, the air conditioning looks fantastic. Uh, the other thing about the interior of my car is, is that, I mean, I would have preferred more leather in the interior. It would have been nice to have the leather dash. Uh, my mate has the leather dash on his GT3, and I think the leather looks fantastic. And the leather on the doors, on the little side panels. Um, I've been looking at exclusive option. I'll put the link down at the bottom here. They do a lot of leather parts for Porsche and other brands. Uh, my friend has them in his car. The quality is exceptional. Um, I think I will buy a few pieces from them. I haven't, I mean, I'm sort of narrowing it down. It works out to be quite expensive. I mean, you could spend, you know, at least $5,000 on leather to, to upgrade your interior. I think some of the things are quite good, so I might look at that in the future. Um, otherwise, the interior of my car, the seats are in excellent condition. Um, Everything is working fine. There's no other problems. It looks pretty much brand new inside. It, it, it was important to me. I mean, I know a lot of other 997s for sale aren't as in good condition. 
um, I probably paid a little bit more of a premium to get a car in this uh, this condition. Um, but yeah, interior was faultless. The only thing wrong with it was the um, air conditioning buttons. So I guess the other thing to take note of when you're per when you're looking for a 911 is whether to buy it from a dealer or from a private sale. Now the thing is in Australia there is not a lot of 997s for sale. Um, 997 in a manual as well, manual transmission I'm talking about here. Um, manual transmission, 997, sometimes it can only be like, sometimes there's only like six or seven for sale here in Australia on the main car site. Um, so you don't have a lot of choice. I was looking for a long time as you would know from my previous, from my first video. Um, and I just happened to come across one from a dealer. Obviously the dealer was easier because I traded my car in and I didn't want the hassle of doing a private sale. I would have lost money there, but all in all, the, the experience, uh, the, um, the ease of doing it with the lack of time, the ease of doing it through the dealer was worth the small amount of money that I lost on the trade-in. Uh, my Audi as well needed other work done to it, so it was, it, you know, you have to weigh up the cost. And for me, the cost to, to trade it with the dealer was actually beneficial. I just want to say as well, the dealer experience I had here in Sydney was absolutely faultless. It was fantastic. Scuderia Graziani here in Sydney sell a lot of um, a lot of beautiful cars. They sell Ferraris, they sell old, old, rare Ferraris, a lot of Porsches, GT3s, 993 Turbos. They have a lot of stock. Um, I'll link them down below, actually. It's not an endorsement or anything. It's just, you know, they were really helpful with me and I would probably look for my second car there. Um, yeah, so the dealer experience was positive. Um, I guess when you're looking for a car, you have to... You know, don't rule out a dealer because you think you're going to pay more. Sometimes it's better to do it through the dealer, the dealer network. So I guess another important question is, should you buy a Carrera or should you buy a Carrera S? Um, I'm not saying I wouldn't have wanted a Carrera S. I like the Carrera S because it has better brakes. I like the Carrera S, uh, certain things about the interior of the Carrera S, the silver trim instead of the volcano grey trim. Um, the extra engine, obviously the extra horsepower. Uh, I like the S on the back as well, it's very cool. <laughs> um, but when it comes down to budget, uh, the budget that I had to spend and the amount of money I wanted to spend, it was within uh, buying a Carrera. Um, a Carrera, I think a Carrera S did come up, a Carrera S2, but it was very, very expensive, so Mark II, 997 Mark II, sorry. Um, not disappointed with the Carrera, I think if you haven't had a Porsche before, it's your first Porsche. <laughs> If you haven't had a Porsche before, your first Porsche, a Carrera, is a great car. Um, some people say the base Carrera is the best Porsche in its simplest form. I know that um, Nick Murray always says that for the 991. Um, I'm not saying it's better. I'm saying, you know, if you haven't had a Porsche before, the Carrera is, is an amazing experience. It's an amazing car. <clears throat> and saying that, don't rule out a Carrera because you want a Carrera S. Especially one that's well optioned. Okay, so following on from whether to get a Carrera or a Carrera S, um, the main thing with, you know, uh, it would have been good to have the Porsche Sports exhaust option. Um, the exhaust on the Carrera is a little bit soft. If you've got a base Carrera, you know what I'm talking about. It doesn't have, you know, it, ha it still has a Porsche sound, but it's not a, it, it, it's loud, it revs, but it's not a great sound. Um, so I looked into options for the exhaust, if you're looking, you know, I looked at the Tubi, I looked at the uh, InnoTech with the push button, which was very, very expensive. You can watch my video here actually about buying an exhaust. Um, I ended up getting the Fister exhaust. I ordered it directly from Darren Fister at FD Motorsports in California. <clears throat> Darren was really helpful. He will, um, he will source the cores for you. He will finish them if you want the ceramic coating. I got mine in the satin black coating and then he will ship them to you and then you can return your cores back to him. Now, because I was in Australia, I thought I could return the cores. When I checked out the shipping cost, it outweighed the benefit of the refund that Darren was offering. So I kept mine and also my tips didn't come off and they've got Carrera, original Carrera S dual tips. Um, <clears throat> and when they, uh, oh yeah, I had my exhaust sent, the exhaust from Fisto was sent direct to Order House Hamilton and they fitted it for me. When they tried to take the exhaust off, uh, the tips were really welded on, so I ended up buying some Danks tips. So I kept my original exhaust, I haven't sold it. I mean, if I sell the car, I guess the new owner will get two exhaust systems, <laughs> not one. But all in all, the Fisto exhaust, the sound is fantastic. Uh, it's not droney. 
it's really good when you open the car up. Uh, I leave the window open a lot now when I'm driving because the sound is just amazing. Anyone buying a Porsche 911 that doesn't have a Porsche Sports exhaust, look at the uh, Fister exhaust. If you're buying a 911, you're probably going to decide between a manual gearbox, which is rarer, and a Tiptronic PDK uh, gearbox. Um, I would opt for the manual. The manual is fantastic. It's a little bit, you know, it it was a big change from the Audi. It was a lot. Uh, I stalled the car a lot when I first got it. <laughs> it wasn't. It was. It took me a little while to get used to it. Now I'm used to it. It's a fantastic gearbox. It's a little hard to get into second when you first started off. Just be aware of that. Uh, when sorry, when the engine's cold, it's a little hard to get into first, into second. Um, but the gearbox is is amazing. I'm still thinking whether to get a short shifter, um, but the manual gearbox. Absolutely amazing. I would go with a manual if you are looking for a uh, 997 Carrera. Back to the gearbox. I mean, in heavy city traffic, I've been stuck in traffic a few times in Sydney. It, it's a lot, it is heavier, it is a heavier clutch. Of course, it's not going to be as heavy as a GT3 or something like that, or, you know, a clutch in a GT3, but it's, it's heavy and, you know, you, your leg gets sore, my leg gets sore after a while in heavy traffic. But, you know, when you're on the open road and when you're, you know, really going through the twisties, you cannot, you cannot, uh, you just want a manual gearbox. Fuel economy is not great. Around the city, uh, I'm trying to think what it gets me. It's quite heavy. I know I fill up a lot more than I used to. I think I was filling up the tank twice a week, so I must be driving a lot, but um, fuel economy is not great. It's not something that I take a lot of notice of, but if you're buying a 911, just be aware that, you know, your fuel bills probably will go up but your enjoyment factor goes up at the same time, so it's worth it. So I guess the most important thing that people are concerned about when they buy a 997, especially um, 2005 to 2008, so the Mark I, is the IMS issue. Um, the IMS issue, the bearing issue, there have been failures. It's well documented on the internet, on forums, Renlist, Piston Heads, 911 UK, etc. I'm not gonna get into it too deeply here. There is a video I made about IMS here, there's also another, I don't know if I still have the link, but there is a link I read the other day, which is really good. I'll try and link it below if I still have the link. Um, my car is a 2006, mid 2006, so it has the different bearing to the earlier 2004 to 2005 cars. It's not a replaceable bearing. A lot of people get their bearings um, replaced. Uh, I can't think of the brand now. Um, it's something you have to be aware of. It shouldn't take away from your enjoyment. If you do the PPI, get your car well checked over, it's pre preventative, really. I mean, yes, it could happen. I don't think you should worry about it too much. I have read recently, actually in the past week, that a lot of the cars affected were Carrera S, early Carrera S, and then I also read that the Tiptronic ones were the ones that were worse affected than the manual. So. I'm not sure if it's true, but you know, you have to be aware of IMS, research it, have a look at the forums, Renlist, Piston Heads, and get a good PPI and just be aware of the issue. And um, yeah, I think that's the best you can do. So now to the fun bit. The best thing about the 911 is the driving experience. You cannot beat driving a Porsche 911. It is absolutely fantastic. I've driven, I've been a passenger in many 911s. I've been a passenger in a GT3, which is fantastic. But even just driving a base 911 is absolutely fantastic. Now I've got the Fister exhaust. You know, I mean, the sound of the car, the way that the weight transfers through the twisties, uh, you know, braking before the corner, going around the corner. You know, I've, I've done a drive down to uh, Kangaroo Valley here in Australia, which was just fantastic. Um, it's just a fantastic driving experience and it's worth the money it's it's worth the outgoings it's worth everything to to drive the car um, I love it it's fantastic the other thing about the 911 is um, I think the 997 will be I mean I guess most Porsches are, are classic cars in the end but it's a future classic uh, the Carrera in its base form in silver uh, like I said I do want to get the OEM wheels so it has OEM wheels but it's, it's a future classic. Now, obviously, I think it may depreciate a little bit in the short term. I'm not sure, actually, but it, it may. But they're very short supply 997s here, even dot .1s. Dot .2s even worse, and dot .2s are holding their price. And I think that's a worldwide trend. Dot .2s are holding their price very, very well. Um, but I think it's a future classic. Regardless, you know, 
it doesn't matter. It's a great car to drive and that's all that matters. You know, at the moment, I have no intention of selling this car in the short term. Um, like I said, I think I will take a minor hit um, depreciation, but I think it'll come back up pretty quickly. So I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, just wanted to try and help some other people on their Porsche journey. Um, share the passion as they say and uh, just a bit of insight on, on what I went through when I was buying the Porsche and how it is now after I've had it for, you know, how I put 2,000 kilometers on it, which is not a lot as you know, but um, I haven't been, I've been traveling a lot so I haven't got a chance to drive it, which is really annoying. Um, but it's a great car, it's a great purchase. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I'll try and, and try and help. If you think about buying a 911, then, you know, I would not hesitate. Uh, it's a great car and a great driving experience.